Hello everyone, this is Bradley. So today we are going to make this car transformation or transition v uh, animation. And this animation was already kind of well known for Cinema 4D and the people did that in animation nodes. And later people frequently asked, is that possible to do the same things in geometry nodes? I think it was not originally designed for geometry nodes to do this sort of stuff, but the later developers uh, made kind of a decision change, uh, which coincidentally uh, made this animation possible. So we are going to do this in 3.0 alpha. Let's go. So here we're in Blender and uh, this, I've already imported a, a free car model from Blender Swap. You can download that for free from the link in the descriptions. Uh, just to know that I'm not the author. And uh, it's, there is a very important part so you need to be aware when you're uh, working with such kind of car model is that you need a car model that has separated components because this is a key part of our animation later. Uh, it, because uh, if you're downloading a free model, it's very possible that you downloaded a model that everything has been merged together. You have to either separate manually or you find another model. Okay, so let's go to noting. And I'm going to switch to geometry nodes. And I'm going to remove these car collections outside and uh, just to hide that because I do not need to look at that anymore. Within collections, I'm going to create whatever objects, plane or whatever, because we're not going to use this plane geometry. We're directly going to use the collection info and take the car collection. Once we do that and replace the original geometry sockets, we can even dis uh, we can even delete this group input so that you're not being confused. In that case, we have our car back. If you use your mouse to hover on this green button, it will tell you it, what it's outputting. And now it's out it says it outputs one instance, which is this entire car collection as a whole. But if you separate the children, then it will tell you there are 68 instances within this geometry. The whole point here is that if you go to the spreadsheet and you will be able to visualize basically all the information from uh, your node tree. And if you select the object, you can find it within mesh, there's no information about the vertices, no information about the edge, nothing in face, nothing in face corner. And you won't see any information unless you go to the instances. And the instances has a very interesting icon and uh, you might be familiar with this icon this icon is literally the empty, the icon of an, an empty. So what it means is that all these kind of instances kind of mirage. What it means is they are basically empties that is showing something from a collection. So you basically can do the same if it goes to the empty collections and not the, the instancing and to show a collection. So you basically do the same thing. The only difference is if you separate the children's then instead of one car, you have multiple components of the car from the instances. And in this case, uh, you as you probably know about the blenders, is that you cannot go to edit modes, you cannot access any vertices, you cannot access polygons, you cannot edit anything, but rather just to control the uh, this empty as a whole. This is the same thing as you're working with these instances, unless you're trying to realize the instances. But this is our point today, where we don't want to worry about all these kind of polygons with all these kind of instances. We rather want to con uh, control each empty as a whole so that we rotate each part within the whole stuff. Okay. So here's the node which is called uh, scale instances and the rotation rotate instances. These are two new nodes that uh, land in the master of 3.0 alpha, and we delete these empties. And by manipulating these rotating instances, we rotate the instances. But uh, there is one problem that you find is that we have a basically kind of a wheel there. Uh, like uh, they are not actually rotating based on their center of the objects. Like the rotation axis looks kind of very weird. And it does not really work if you put the position into the pivot point. It does change something, but not really. The reason is that so when we import the car model, this is how our car model looks like. And you can see the origin of the 
in object is very weird. Uh, mostly it's because there is a mirror modifiers within that. I do not look like uh, I do not like this, and I would like to deal with all this kind of bad part of uh, the object. So here we are going to apply all the uh, all the modifiers, and the way I'm going to do that is goes to object, and within convert, they will convert to mesh. Then it will actually apply to all the modifier. So now the object has been uh, modifier has been applied. You can see there is nothing nothing in the modifier panel, but the but there are also two problems. One problem is the object is not being separated. So we're going to separate all the objects. So I think I'm going to go to edit mode and select all the mesh and hit piece separated by loose parts. So now all the mesh has been separated. Each object has been completely individual. And then we go to right click and it goes to origin to geometry. So now all the origin has been reset to the basically the center of a an object. Especially you need to worry about the kind of origin of this kind of tiny small part. And then if we go back to our plane, then what you can see is the rotations is occurring here, occurring here, basically relative to the original object. So this is kind of good enough because we're not going to rotate on Z, but we're going to rotate on Y, something like this. Okay, so this is good enough already. Uh, you can disable the local axis depending on what you want. Probably I would just disable the local space. Scale, I'm not sure. I probably will keep that. Next step is basically to create the morph or the transition part within the whole setup. So here are two options. Uh, one is mix RGB, one is mix XYZ. Uh, essentially, they are the same. I've explained in the demonstration while I was creating these presets. Uh, there is one problem, however, with this mix RGB is uh, it can only work within the range of 0 to 1. So even if you type 2, uh, the, f the effect will not change compared to the factor 1. But in this case, mix vector node, if you type 2, the effect will be beyond the effect of one. So because we're going to talk about the overshoot lately, uh, so that's why I'm going to use this mixed vector node instead of mixed RGB. So that I think the effect will looks kind of better with the scale. So here we just uh, get mix XYZ into place and we combine vector. So we need to define a starting position, like the starting everything is one, and the starting rotations everything is zero. By connecting them, and we will see the effect. Okay. So now at the starting everything has the the normal scale we know, but if we take the factor to one, then there is everything has been scaled to zero. So this is idea of morphing or the transition. And for the rotations, I'm going to take the maybe negative pi and then rotate this whole stuff. Okay. So here, if you only control this single vac factor as a constant, then it definitely is too boring. So we are going to use uh, directional fold. There are also many other types of fold by credit. But I think a directional fault is the most straightforward one if you're looking at this setup. And then we put the positions as a wave to evaluate. Select an empty. Uh, I'm going to choose this empty as a arrow so that we can see the x-axis of our object clearly. And then put the fault into the factor. So immediately you can see the effects by playing with this fault Within, along with the x-axis, then we're trying to make this kind of transition. And this is very fast, very kind of convenient. But obviously you see some parts that, uh, I do not really like the base part of the car, but this is the issue when we're talking about the models. Maybe you can separate them that manually or other things. But this is, uh, I'm not going to deal with that in this particular tutorial. 
So now we basically have the transition done. So here we basically already finished this animation, but I would like to talk about a little bit of the concept about the overshoot. Uh, basically overshoot is kind of idea that's the... So if you're doing kind of a disappearance effect, you probably do not really care about what's going on. But if you're trying to do a kind of revealing effect, the force of all these kind of rotation does not seem to be very large. The overshoot is basically the rotation or, or the, any kind of effect which go beyond its desired location and then it goes back to its uh, desired uh, position. So in that case it feels like uh, kind of there is a force, uh, there is a real force in the effect. So here is kind of, uh, so we take the float curve and we disable, so firstly there is a bug within this float curve, it will automatically link everything into factor. So link to value instead, and then we're going to hit this icon and disable clipping. And then we're trying to make the easy effects a little bit overshoot. We can actually even reset the view, uh, but it does not really work very well. So the whole point is that you create a kind of two points, that's the, which is below and the larger than its desire. And then you can see how this effect has been going on. But uh, definitely there's a part which I do not really like is this kind of base. Can I actually even delete this base within the original model because I feel like it does not really help anything. Hmm, I hate this base. But this is <laughs> something you need to deal with <laughs> when working with a kind of object. I think I will try to edit that in the final edition of while I'm exporting the animation but uh, for now basically this is how it goes and you basically if you would like to make a car into another car you basically just do this entire same process within another car the only difference is you reverse these transitions so that while one car actually disappears the other car actually appears then it will make everything much more interesting but this is everything is basically kind of kind of uh, illusion that one car becomes another car. It's in reality it's just one car disappears and another car shows up. So this is it. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.